Aw, uh, all that remains of the badassery of the moon cave is just the stupid little statue, but who cares? I have a freaking sword on my back! Either way, hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Okami! I don't know where I was going with that. In the last episode, we celebrated the death of Orochi at Kamiki Village at the annual festival. And in this episode, with the new sword on our back that we got after slaying Orochi, we are going to do a quick side quest here in Kamiki Village. If you remember, Saki was telling us we need to head out to Capital City, and what you want to do is, hey, come back here. Come back here. Come on, come back here. I just want to talk to you. Here we go, here's Ida. What he's going to do is, he wants to race us. Now, you need to defeat this guy three times to get the necessary reward. He gives you praise each time, though, but there's a special reward I'm talking about. What you want to do is just go ahead and cut ahead right here, and then just tackle him there. If you do that all three times, he is not difficult. You can race him once a day, though, but of course you can just draw Crescent Moon in the sky, and then you can just draw the sun again, though. That's just what I'm gonna do. Go to the moon in the sky, make it nighttime. Draw the sun in the sky. Oh, very bad circle. Draw the sun in the sky. There we go. Not bad. Chase my tail, chase my tail. And Ida should spawn right about here. Hey, come back. Okay. Uh, the second time that you race him, and the third time for that matter, he's going to drop some spike balls behind him. But if you tackle him in the way that I show, it's not going to be that big of a problem. Either way, let's do some mailman abuse. It's what dogs do best. Oh, oh dang, and I messed it up. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and cut this and the third race, though, because you win them the exact same way each time. His root changes very slightly. But if you just do it that way each time, you don't even get to see the changes in his room, which is good. You can just feed him the same way every time. Either way, see you guys in just a moment. Now actually, while well, this awesome music is playing, that was a bit of a mistake on my part. Uh, what you're actually... You actually don't race him for the third time until later in the game. I just wanted to get the first two races out of the way now so that it wouldn't be, you know, such a pain later on. But anyway, uh, now, uh, with a mermaid coin that you hopefully have in your inventory, I'm gonna go ahead and teleport to Taka Pass, which is where the uh, area to the cap, the path of the capital city in Ryoshima Coast is, like Saki was telling us we're gonna have to go to. So, I don't have a mermaid coin. Let's fix that with some editing magic. We had two the whole time. I'm not pulling your guys' legs at all. Okay, now back in Taka Pass, without further interruption, what we wanna do is we wanna cross this. Well. Can we do here? Uh, Wiimote. Oh, there. That was kind of weird. My Wiimote like locked in place. I've never seen it actually do that before. And I got my Wii on the launch date though, so I kind of don't really get how that works. Either way, a uh, little tiny secret you can do up here if you use Vine and then use Wind right here. Uh, you have some scroll platforming, the worst kind. Let's do that again. Whoa, whoa! I fell through. Ah. Okay, let's actually do it this time. Let's. How did that even happen? All right, yeah! Oh god, finally did it. If we're doing that, you get a golden peach, which fills the astral pouch instantly. Basically, an extra life. So yeah. Either way, we go all the way over here. We see another little sad face. Actually, uh, that isn't necessarily a sad face. Uh, there's a bit of history behind that, though. It's a bit complicated for me to explain in speech without knowing Japanese, though, so I'll go ahead and explain it there, and I like how I hit the guy with ink. I wish that... Okay, good. The animal got out of the way. I kept hitting the animal with the ink, which I wasn't trying to do, which got really annoying, so I was drawing it right as the animal was like, I gotta get in the way of your ink and get splashed by it. And that's exactly how the animal sounds, as I said so. Um, there is another stray bead that you can get really close to here through that. Unfortunately, we cannot do anything about this yet until we have another ability, and before any of you tell me that I can cherry bomb it and get through it, I can't. Trust me. Now, what we want to do right here is... It's bingo! There, there, there! There it is! My pendulum is calling out to me! The treasure must be buried here! What are you staring at, Pooch? Want to help me dig up the treasure? My pendulum should be where it was. Completely lost track of where it was now. There, there must be some kind of clue around here somewhere. Now what you have to do is use win. That is the key. Now you talk to him. There, this is it. The treasure is. This guy must be like a pirate or something like that. That treasure revealed its hiding place and wants to be found. And apparently he sounds like that now just because I said he does. 
And if we talk to him a second time, he will ask if we can dig with him. And I like how he does his introductory scene now into when we already knew his name was Bingo. For like the past like two times we talked to him. And now, guess what you have to do? We have a digging minigame right here. Yep. Taga Pass has a digging minigame. Uh, how I really don't want to do this. Uh, right off the bat, you can use Bloom on this if you can actually... Let me draw a small circle. I've heard people say drawing up. Oh, that actually does help. Look at that. Tip that actually worked. Go ahead and draw wind to make him go over. Uh, something that you guys pointed out in the comments that I didn't show the first time is that if you power slash uh, the person that's, you know, doing the digging minigame with you, uh, you can make them turn around. So if they're about to walk into something you don't want them to walk into and you think doing Gale Storm is a little bit, you know, unnecessary, you can do that. I kind of didn't do that, though, because even though I... It can be kind of unnecessary. I more or less prefer Gale Storm. So uh, let's go ahead and raise him out of the water if I can. Come on. Come on. Game. Oh, now it does it, of course. Dude. Can you go up, please? Where is he? Oh, good. He came up. All right. Yes. Okay, good. Come on. Ink, 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 ink. No, no. God. I hate digging mini games. Let's do that. Okay, apparently you guys were actually lying to me. Or I just fail at drawing really small circles. There we go. Get it right. Okay. Now, time limit, as you can see in the corner, is very unforgiving. It's just like how YouTube used to be. So, what we have to do right here is we have to get him as far over as we can possibly get him. Uh, where is he? Okay. He gets over here, we gotta blow him across. Oh god, my time limit's not looking so good. Um, okay, fix that. 20 more seconds. Give him a fix. Give him a fix! Alright, good, 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 okay. Go down here, go down here, go down here. Alright, come on, come on. Ink, move faster! I don't wanna do this again, it's hard! Okay, good. No, dude. Yell storm. Okay, go. Go! I'm not gonna make this out. Hit the thing! I'm not. Uh, I have to do that all over again. <laughs> okay, I'll cut back to my successful attempt. Give me just a minute to do this. Screw you! Okay, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, dude. You have way more than enough time to find the place I have to dig. Come on! Come on! Come on! Yeah! <laughs> Spin that pendulum! Freaking did it. Okay. A lot of people recommend that you wait until you have 10 ink pots to do this. I did it with 8, okay? So I am very, very fine. But what is it? I don't know what we've gone and dug up here, Pooch. Maybe there's something wrong with my pendulum. No, it looks like I found something totally unexpected. Enough of something completely different. So, we get a piece of junk! Not a piece of heart, but a piece of junk. Yes, we get a sun fragment. Very, very nice. Now, just because I can, I'm going to go ahead and draw the moon in the sky. Because I want to make it nighttime, because right near Bingo, there's a digging spot we want to look for. Aha! There it is. Okay. So what we want to do is, I will go ahead and dig this up, and it's going to contain... Hey, we haven't seen one of these in a while. Stray bead. And now, I guess while we're here, we might as well take out this demon gate. Now I can explain how the mechanics of the sword work, or the glaive, rather. Now let's go ahead and raise it up toward the sky, and as you can see right there, when I have the Wiimote held up toward the sky, it charges. So, uh, we also can use our brush techniques without canceling this charge if we do it right. Uh, in the PS2 version, that was a fatal glitch with it, was that you would basically waste your ink if you would charge anything, and that is not good. So just... Alright, done. Uh, the Glaive, you have to charge it up if you want to maximize your damage, so it's good against enemies like this that you have to, like, wait to attack. However, what's really, really annoying about it, uh, sometimes it's not always the most responsive weapon, 
And that didn't make things worse. That didn't make things bad enough already, I guess you could say. Um, it is also the slowest attacking weapon. This makes it very well good for getting Demon Fangs, as I just showed right there. It's also really great to use in the air, though, because you do a downward strike, which is almost which doesn't even need a charge. But it also, uh, let's see, it also does the most damage of any weapon, uh, any weapon type that is. But again, it is the slowest weapon. Let's go over here and feed you guys. So yeah, slowest weapon, very very good for getting Demon Fangs, but it's not always the most responsive in terms of controls unless you're doing the downward strike while jumping. Uh, unlike the Rosary, just like the Reflector, uh, it's good for attacking while in the air, but, yeah, it's pretty much self-explanatory. I think I've covered that weapon well enough. Uh, as a sub-weapon, you press the Z button to hold the sword in your mouth. Yeah, a wolf with a sword in its mouth! That has got to be the coolest thing ever in a video game, seriously. Uh, you charge forward with it in your mouth if you press the Z button while it's your sub-weapon. That's pretty much how that works. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Uh, off screen, after this episode, I'm gonna be sure to go to uh, Kusa Village. Because when we go to Kusa Village, Haruka at the inn has something for us. She has a wanted monster list that you can get, and you have to defeat regular enemies at nighttime here in Taka Pass to be able to get it. And let's see, Mother Tree. Hey, Mother Three! Nah. Whatever. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read this. In Kamiki Village, there grows a magnificent tree called Konohana. Konohana has split its roots in, in, to form many trees throughout Nippon in order to better protect and preserve the glory of nature. Differing accounts shed light on the tree's true origin. Some say the tree was born when it sprouted from a dead god. Others speculate that it was transplanted from a faraway land. No story yet concocted can cons be considered the true vision. However, the sensation I get as I draw Konohana is unmistakable. This is a plant that cannot be tamed by a mere brush. The miracle of its existence is more than can be sketched. One wonders what secrets lie behind its broad leaves. So yeah, that's about it. Even though it didn't have any leaves in the drawing, I guess that's why you can't draw it. Is because this, I guess is why the person said that you cannot capture in a drawing is because he couldn't draw leaves. Well, no, not really. It probably has some sort of deep meaning that I just don't get. But because I'm usually not good at those, but well, I do get it though. But at the same time, I don't like to admit that I get it. And anyway, I took you down here at the city checkpoint, even though we're supposed to go across the drawbridge, which is up right now, we can't go through it yet. Because down here, there's a great deal of secrets. Inside of here, there is another clover. It only gives five praise. Oh, speaking of, I didn't realize this. Not what I wanted. Let's upgrade our ink pots again, because we have 300 praise and we can do it. Check that out. Oh, now we have eight. So that means I did it with seven. Yay! I can't count to seven, but I can count to eight somehow. Either way, we want to go ahead and just use water on this. You can also use wind alternatively, though, but I just prefer to use water because it's fancier looking. And I like being a water vendor. Um, good do that. So we get another stray bead, and then right here we get an exorcism flip S. But the reason why I'm going even further down here is. Come on. All right, two buried chests right here. One contains, survey said, stray bead. So yes, we're finally back on track with having like more than 1% completion per episode, which is good. So that's good though, because I kind of didn't like how in the moon cave there were no stray beads though, so it eventually got back to the point where we were at 1% per episode, which definitely I don't think this LP is going to be quite 100 episodes. I'm thinking more like Wind Waker length, though. But either way, now that we've gotten all those stray beads, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and end things off here because we got just about all the side quests done before heading off to Ryoshima Coast in the capital city uh, that I wanted to get done. So, next time on Okami, we are going to go find out what is up with that drawbridge. Hey, great view. I like that. Thanks, game, for adjusting the camera that way when I wanted it. Okay. Either way, see you guys then.